Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In my video yesterday, I told you about a failed rescue attempt for the IDF, excuse me, IOF, in Gaza. They tried to rescue one of their hostages who were held by Hamas, and they failed. Hamas released a statement saying that there was indeed a rescue attempt, but the forces who tried to rescue the hostage were killed and injured. That actual rescue attempt was carried out in a Red Cross vehicle. It's important to note that. So Israel is using the Red Cross to disguise itself and try and reach the hostages. Where, where is the outrage about this? Where, is the, where are the headlines exactly? Someone explained to me. Using the Red Cross that is in charge of taking care of hostages using them as a disguise for a military operation? Really? Where are the headlines? Someone tell me. Anyway, Hamas said that they killed all of them and uh, killed some of them and injured some of them. Yesterday, the IOF spokesperson, Hagari, he confirmed that there was indeed a rescue attempt for some of the hostages or one of them and that it failed and they only admitted that two soldiers were critically wounded. That's just yesterday, okay? Today we received a confirmation. Israeli website, Ynet, which is the online version of Yedi'ot Aharonot, said that Sahar Baruch was indeed killed uh, whilst held by Hamas. So they just confirmed it, right, that he was killed, and yesterday, the military spokesperson said that indeed there was a rescue attempt that failed. But what is the Israeli news saying? They're saying that uh, Hamas is using psychological terror, which is what I wanted to talk to you about today. Why are they using psychological terror? Because they said that he was killed during a rescue attempt. You just confirmed it yesterday. You just confirmed, your military spokesperson just confirmed yesterday that there was a failed rescue attempt. And the media today is trying to say that Hamas are using psychological terror to say that he was killed during a, a rescue attempt. Imagine the level of lies. It's similar to that day where they posted that note with the weekday saying that it's names of people who were uh, holding the Israeli hostages under Al-Shifa hospital. And some people are buying it. So if we thought we had censorship here, censorship in Israel is on another league. We're talking about Orwellian state censorship. It's, it's on another level. And they're using the term psychological terror. They used the same term when they spoke about the videos that Hamas uh, released when they were freeing the hostages and their response and how well they looked that embarrassed Israel across the world and that most of the mainstream media doesn't even show or uh, allow even. So they're saying this is part of a cycle. So the truth, this is the explanation, the truth is psychological terror. So, so we reached a level from where legitimate self-defense, legitimate resistance is terror, to the truth being spoken is psychological terror. So, so basically anything that opposes the mainstream or official or just Zionist narrative is somewhat related to terror. But people, not everyone is buying it, even in Israel. I mean, after I read through this, which is quite ridiculous, I read some of what, what the people said. And one of them said, what do you mean? psychological terror. The military spokesperson confirmed this yesterday. Another person said, we're, we're seeing exactly what you're doing. Online, we're seeing 100 times more than what you're telling us. And you're not telling people what's actually happening on the ground. So some people realize it. That's with the comments that were actually approved. Most people who have critical comments that are substantial and have a lot of information and then they get completely banned but this isn't outside the norm so if you recall a couple of weeks ago uh, during the beginning of the war 
Yair Lapid, who is the opposition leader and previous temporary Israeli prime minister, who spent most of his life as a journalist, came out with a very important message to the international media. What did he say? He said, you cannot be objective. He said, the media cannot be objective. Being objective means siding with the Hamas. Imagine a person who spends his whole life in journalism, which is supposedly about revealing the truth, reporting on actual things, is going out there asking, begging the world, do not be objective. Well, firstly, they're already not objective, number one. But imagine the level they want to take it to. So they want to completely erase the narrative of what's happening in Gaza and the whole Palestinian narrative so that they can uh, enjoy and, and move on with their crimes and with their genocide. So it's not surprising in a sense that people actually back it and ask for it, including people who are journalists and who know what's happening. But Israel's existence as a state was established on that. It was established on a pseudo-narrative, a made-up narrative, about them claiming a land where no one lived. Land without people to people without a land, as if no one lived there, as if uh, no Palestinians existed, as if they didn't expel 750,000 Palestinians. So this is what's happening in terms of censorship, and everything is being labeled as psychological terrorism. So this is what I wanted to talk to you about today. And I uh, hope I added some info for you. And I'll see you soon in the next video.